So um, thank you for being here. My name is Joan Kerber Walker, and I work at AZ Bio. And I have the pleasure of introducing um, our White Hat co-chairs, Mara Aspinall from Illumina Ventures, <laughs> Jason Jardine from Kenobi Martin, and our AZ Bio Board of Directors, some of which are I've seen have already arrived. Would you please stand? All right, so we got the niceties out of the way. Um, we have a big day planned for you today and some amazing speakers. You want to be here from morning all the way back to the end when we have alcohol. And hopefully in between, you will make some great connections. Um, here at White Hat, this is the 10th year that we have held White Hat. We've had five conferences. We go every other year. White Hat companies have gone on to raise, based on SEC data, not monkey data, uh, $2.4 billion. And so, as I've told everyone that's presenting, no one walks around an investor conference with a checkbook. This is where you make connections, form relationships, educate about your companies, and learn what investors are looking for. And so I am thrilled to now to pass the baton to our first panel, um, talking about hospitals from an investor's perspective. And Jason, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Joan. Um, grateful to be here, grateful to be with all of you. It's been a, this is a fun conference and I think that you will all enjoy it very much. Uh, what we're gonna talk about a little bit today is hospitals as investors. And to start, let's, let's introduce our, our, our panel a little bit. Um, would you please introduce yourself a little bit and tell us how you got involved in your current position? Okay. Uh, my name is Jermaine Agri, and I'm a director of corporate development uh, at Mayo. Um, I am a newbie. I joined Mayo Clinic um, Arizona in May of 2024. Um, it's been great. It's been enjoyable. But I've had a career in finance most of my uh, life did a little sales and trading, worked at a few private equity companies focused on the specialty chemicals industry, also did corporate development on the buy side, uh, focused on kind of aerospace and defense, and then most recently I was at uh, company Henry Schein as executive director of corporate development, uh, which is a, their medical products distribution company before I joined uh, Mayo. So it's been a great environment. I am focused specifically on the Mayo Clinic Arizona campus, so I am local. Um, and it's been a great environment. I didn't know prior to joining Mayo how much investing they did um, and the vast majority of the different industries that they, they invest in. So it's been a great opportunity and, and looking forward to talking with uh, some of you entrepreneurs later in the day. Great. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kiran Avancha. Um, Today I wear a different hat, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm the Chief Innovation Officer uh, for Honor Health. Honor Health, uh, those of you who know or in local, we're the second largest health system in the state of Arizona. Um, just uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, we, we, we went from a six hospital health system to over 10 hospitals in one scoop. Uh, and we are very excited about the transition in terms of uh, a, a pretty large uh, system in the state. Um, I'm a pharmacist by training uh, and a PhD in drug development, drug discovery. I've been in healthcare space, oncology drug development for over two decades, uh, all the way from operating uh, research units, uh, clinical research, um, um, and um, in fact, I'm also an entrepreneur myself. I built my first company, um, uh, which is a clinical research organization, a CRO. Uh, spread it into six countries, uh, expanded in six countries, and sold it to a private equity group. I took an exit, and um, and then um, I had uh, I was lucky enough to start another <laughs> uh, biotech. Uh, and that's a very s small startup uh, uh, that I that I do right here in in the state um, in a rare disease space. But my uh, as as the chief innovation officer of Honor Health, my role is to evaluate uh, early stage to up until Series A, Series B companies that have a strategic uh, interest for the health systems. So um, we, we deploy capital. So in fact, uh, um, I, I, 
uh, I had the opportunity to build a fund for Honor Health uh, for innovation. Um, so we deploy out of that fund. And we have about a, 18 companies in our portfolio, and we're very excited to uh, expand that portfolio forever. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jason Jardine. I'm a patent attorney. I work with uh, a firm called Kenobi Martins in the life science space. And uh, as, as part of this, this discussion, uh, we're talking a little bit about hospitals being investors. That's, that's not a common thing for all hospitals to do. Um, so although there are a number of hospital systems that now have become investors in companies, how was it that Mayo and Honor Health decided that they wanted to get into this space? And you know, what, what's the history there? Okay. Um, so as of right now, Mayo Clinic's business development team is broken up into kind of two arms. We have Mayo Clinic Ventures, which kind of has an inside out um, kind of motto or mandate. And then we have the corporate development team, which was where I sit, which has a kind of outside in kind of mandate. But when the business development group started in, I want to say 2016, uh, it was just one arm and they were purely focused on tech transfers. So dealing with early stage companies um, and what Mayo found out is early, sometimes so early stage that it was difficult to attract licenses, licensees and uh, collaborators. So that's when Mayo decided to invest more in these businesses or products to you know, help build up data, maybe help with the proof of concept, and essentially try to add value to attract um, you know, licenses and collaborators and partners. Um, so that's kind of how you got the Mayo Clinic Ventures. Again, we're Mayo Clinic Ventures, early stage, dealing with early stage companies, series, seed capital to series A, maybe some opportunistic series Bs is follow on, um, you know, typical check size, anywhere from about a half a million to five million with no, in, the, in the Series A round with no more than 20 million in, in one company uh, to avoid uh, portfolio concentration. But that's that inside out motto from a MCV perspective of building you know, businesses or companies uh, from the inside of kind of the Mayo environment with, um, to the outside and commercializing for the outside use. Subsequent to that, that's when the corporate development team was started and it has the outside in model where we specifically identify you know, problems, pain points within the clinical practice um, at Mayo, and then we try and find outside you know, technologies, businesses, or companies that can solution that specific pain point um, and bring that inside the Mayo uh, environment. And from an investment standpoint, you know, we kind of run it through that, hey, it has to uh, solution a specific pain point within the Mayo practice, has to fit our strategic uh, goals and vision that we have, and then third, kind of hit those financial metrics. So that's how we think about it, but the, and that was the impetus of how we got into investing in private, com private companies. Perfect. Yeah, I, I think uh, that's, that's the model that a lot of health systems have, uh, have looked at, and, and whether it is Mayo or Cleveland Clinic. Our journey at Honor Health is um, relatively uh, newer uh, in that journey. We, we have been making those investments for the last four years since um, we, uh, we, we made one investment five years ago, but um, it, it was our one-off kind of a thing in a local uh, Arizona-based ASU startup, and uh, it's a med device company. Uh, the, the idea was like, uh, we have an amazing research institute within the on health system, so um, one of the pioneers in conducting early uh, phase one, first in human type of research uh, in oncology, um, led by Dr. Don, Dan Von Hoff out of uh, Tijan, and, and, and uh, he, his clinical partnership was at uh, Honor Health. So we had this privilege to set up this uh, research institute almost 15 mm -hmm. years ago. And um, so we, since then, we started working with a number of uh, uh, small small biotechs all the way to the to the large ones. So there are over 400 plus uh, uh, biotechs the, with whom um, med devices biotechs with whom we, we we would partner to collaborate. 
a lot of them would come in and ask us, uh, hey, I have this molecule, mm -hmm. and um, because of the expertise that, that our, our system has built, uh, they would come down to our medical oncologists and say, hey, um, can you help us design a trial? Can you help us uh, uh, evaluate what pathway should we take to get this drug approved? So we gave a lot of thought, and a lot of these investigator, quote-unquote, initiated trials that are industry-sponsored have caught our attention and said, hey, there is a lot of this knowledge transfer that's happening by a community health system. Mm -hmm. Can we really um, make, a, make a habit of bringing this into some sort of a uh, codified approach in, in, in collaborating with, uh, with partners? And that's how this genesis happened for us. Um, and, and simultaneously, at, this, uh, with the, at the system level, um, the quote-unquote digital health revolution started, right, almost a decade ago, and um, everyone is coming up with a point-of-care solution. You know, I got this point-of-care solution, and, and health systems were reactive to that point-of-care solutions approach, and what they, on health as an approach, uh, what we did was, okay, so let's first define what is innovation internally for on health. So once we started defining this within our own system, you know, what is a process innovation, what is a product innovation, and how is Honor Health going to react to each of these innovations? Uh, if it's a process that's internally developed and we have to um, uh, bring efficiencies to a particular uh, program, then it's a process innovation for us, and we treat it differently, We're not going after making investments like uh, uh, strategic investments like that. Then a product innovation, which is a reactionary thing where we as health systems are consumers of that innovation. And we said, okay, if we are going to be consumers of this innovation, we have to have a say in how that innovation actually happens. And um, to, to our advantage, what we started then finding out, we heard a number of organizations. We, we did a, an extensive market research for over two years. We looked at over 30 health systems across the country. We studied Mayo, <laughs> and um, uh, we brought in an innovation consulting uh, team, and um, I had the fortunate uh, privilege to uh, spearhead that, uh, that campaign to, to define that playbook for Honor Health. And eventually what we had uh, developed was a playbook where, okay, if, if someone comes up with, I, I only want financial, uh, you know, I, I only want capital from you, um, we have a specific take in, in, in how we work with those companies. But if someone comes up and says, hey, I see that there is a problem that, and we are trying to solve this problem, and here is a product which we think might be a fit, uh, but we don't have all the data to prove, then in that sense, we would love to partner with those types of companies, both from a capital deployment standpoint of view and as well as a strategic partnership standpoint. Of view. Are, are most of those uh, companies coming to you from outside, or are they mostly coming from doctors okay. inside? A great question. Again, usually uh, once it's birth, and there is there's always, uh, 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 this, is, this is something that um, I, I early on I'm, uh, learned in my career, uh, whenever you talk to physicians, you know they are very good problem solvers, right? I mean, they and they're very like, excited about whatever <laughs> they're trying to do. <laughs> they are trying. So I think uh, once they understand and and have a process built for them, they they're happy to follow some of these. So initially, what we did was we started attracting external innovations internally, so that we we started matching our problem set to the existing solutions that are out there. But once our own um, constituents within the health system started understanding this, hey, we, we can innovate. So in fact, uh, uh, I can give an example today. Uh, if there are two companies in which we invested right uh, out of Honor Health where uh, one of our clinicians um, uh, came up with an amazing molecule. Uh, he wants to test it in, um, uh, uh, in extreme rare cancers, and we have invested in this company called Stingray Therapeutics, again, going after Sting antagonists. Uh, um, and, and there is another company uh, in neurodiagnostics called CND Life Sciences, which is right here in, in Scottsdale, um, and, and um, the clinician was our medical director of neurology. And he wanted to develop this test uh, called a skin punch biopsy to early diagnose um, um, neurodegenerative diseases, um, or synucleopathies, they call it. So we, we were very uh, excited. We wrote the first check, uh, and now that was in 2020. Our company is now 
amazing. I mean, doing extreme uh, great work. The state has invested significant amount of money into them. They raised close to 20 plus million dollars, but they are already a revenue generating company. They are break even. So we're very excited about those types of opportunities. And it's changing the field of um, you know, neurodiagnostics in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would agree. I think from a male standpoint, in the first stages of our kind of journey, it was attracting Again, ideas externally from external clinicians and doctors, but as we kind of proved our proof of concept in terms of a corporate development in Mayo Clinic Ventures, we have seen a lot of internal male clinicians um, you know, presenting problems, but also presenting solutions to, to problems either for their practice or their colleagues. So, uh, so I would echo those sentiments. So how do you evaluate those? What criteria do you use to say, okay, you're far enough along, mm -hmm. you, you have something, a business plan, right. we, we would like to throw some money at you. Right, so really we kind of run it through that lens of is it solving a specific pain point? Does it meet our strategic vision um, that we put out? So we have a 2030 um, strategic plan that Mayo put out uh, called Cure, Connect, Transform. So Cure meaning by 2030, we're looking for innovative products or technologies that will help cure serious and complex diseases. Connect is hey, trying to enhance patient care through better connectivity and, and, and patient access. access and then transform looking for you know businesses or technologies that could help transform the transform the digital or not the digital but the 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 healthcare patient delivery or platform delivery rather um, and then lastly the financial aspect or size aspect so the size isn't and uh, where they are along the journey isn't as important it's those first two metrics of solving a specific pain point and it uh, mapping to one of those three strategic pillars that we have so if they're early stage, we may put them through kind of MCV lens and we're helping them build that business so that we can um, attract licenses or licensees or do a know-how, do some type of arrangement to help build and, com and eventually commercialize that business. If they're later in the platform or later in their life cycle, that might be, and they're solving a specific pain point within the, uh, uh, I say the male environment in terms of the clinical p practitioners, that's when it would be corporate development investment. And uh, you know, we would also try and get outside investors as well. And so you know, taking a step back, from a male standpoint, we, we rarely do lead investment rounds. So we tend to try and co-invest with other kind of financial investors. So um, you know, and other um, healthcare systems, if they are strategic investors, if they if they if they come in on the on a round as well. But um, because of that, we are looking, I would say, kind of earlier Series A stages for internally, and more seed externally. But there's a little bit of wiggle room both there. But the the stage of where they're in is not as important as hitting those first two metrics of solving a specific pain point and and mapping to one of those three pillars from a strategic standpoint. And, and what makes a, an, an investment attractive to honor? Uh, again, in, in addition to what Mayo is, is, is doing and what uh, was being said, we look for <clears throat> um, uh, adoption. We look for an adoption of that particular product within the health system because if there is no adoption within the system mm -hmm. and if the problem is solved, uh, you know, we, we, we could see so many, and that, and that was the advent of this point of care solution um, thing that I said earlier. There was, when the flood the floodgates just got open, right, there would be like a point of care solution after point of care solution, and, and everybody now was like, oh, you know, then they started figuring it out. Oh, how do I get inside the health system to plug it into the Epic uh, <laughs> platform or, or certain platform. And, and so a lot of these startups have, tend to fail during that kind of a thing. They think that, yeah, I got a product, I got a solution, this, this product can do the solution uh, and, and provide that solution, but why is there no pickup from the health system? Because health systems are, don't, don't, I mean, from an outside, they look like, oh yeah, there is something wrong, but there's so much going on inside the system that you, you know, the, the, the system architecture itself is so complex, complicated, uh, touching different, different areas. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so in order for these products to be successful, we look for an adoption. Now, 
The adoption, what we also look for, is not just an adoption at our health system, because we're a community health system. It may be different at Mayo, where they have an employed model of physicians, and there could be a different adoption model. So we, we tend to look for some of these opportunities where there is a broader adoption within Why? the wider adoption and, consum and, and, and uh, consuming by different organizations. So we tend to provide that as, a, as an opportunity early on to help with answering some of these questions. So we take a very deep dive approach in, in bringing each of these um, opportunities inside. We, we roughly see about um, 250 to 300 opportunities a year. Ours is a very small shop, as I said. Again, we, we either solicit some of these on our own because of a burning problem that we want to solve within the health system. Hey, mm. I have an access issue, so care access issue. Can I solve a care access issue right here? And um, there is another area that I, I think I, I, sh I should have mentioned. So we have this, um, the dynamic play of our entire transformation group within the health system. So the way that it works is, uh, the innovation sits right between the transformation and research. That's how we built it. So that the entire IT transformation infrastructure that happens within the system then consumes innovation in, in an area where, oh, this, this is a great product, let me bring it in and see how this, this works. If it's a, just a validation of a product, that's, that goes into the transformation group. <laughs> No, 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 it requires an entire research area. It requires a clinical trial. It requires an IRB approval. Then you're putting it into the research bucket. So that way, there is this uh, balanced approach for us in, 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 in consuming that innovation or creating that innovation from the beginning. That, so, so you have very specific, interesting criteria. I'm aware of, of certain organizations um, in the med device space that will approach um, an engineering group and say, we have this pain point. Mm -hmm. Can you provide us with a problem or a solution for that pain point? And we will I invest in your, in your, your organization. Mm -hmm. have, have you ever been approached by any of those types of um, engineering groups who are saying, hey, what, what problem would you like us to try and solve? I mean, yeah, from, from, from our perspective, um, I, I'll, I'll attack that in two ways. So from a MCV corporate development perspective, yes, we have had those engineering type of companies or, or school systems approach us saying, look, how can we help solve some of your pain points and attack it from an engineering standpoint um, with the idea of us looking at, you know, maybe we can invest in them and down the stage, um, you know, it'll be mutually beneficial for both of us. Yeah. Um, so that definitely does happen. And then separately, say for the last 20 years, Mayo and uh, Arizona State University have had kind of a joint relationship um, program with the MedTech Accelerator Program, um, which is engineering program, um, trying to attack from, started out as just MedTech, medical devices, um, but it's broadened out to other kind of life sciences type companies. And so that's a relationship that's been established as a joint ASU and Mayo Clinic. But um, from both of our perspectives, it's, hey, uh, pr trying to find interesting technologies within the ASU campus because they're you know, number one innovative university um, in terms of innovation technology that also can potentially be beneficial from a male standpoint and um, uh, running through them through our programs and we invest a little bit in each of the of the applicants who make it through the process and so um, that was let's say 20 years ago was the lens that we were looking in through saying let's attack certain problems from an engineering standpoint and work together and collaboratively on, on that so um, that's it, it happens through the MedTech Accelerator and also happens outside of that where different engineering companies or programs have approached the Mayo Clinic for on one-off type of companies? Um, for us, uh, uh, at least not from an investment standpoint of view, but from an innovation um, uh, angle, we, mm -hmm. were, we, we routinely get approached by, um, you know, med device companies, um, whether it is Boston Scientific or, mm -hmm. um, or uh, others that come in and say, hey, we have this application, we have this product, but we would like to expand its indication. Yeah. So can we, we want to expand this indication and we would like to design a study in which we can treat these specific uh, different kind of patients with this particular device. Uh, 
Well, so they know that it will be adopted yeah, also. Exactly. Sure. So those, that, that's when our own investigators would then jump in to create those types of things. Those are very tricky because then it becomes such a big compli com com complicated conflicts and, and, and things like that. Hey, who, who, who owns the IP in those? Right. <laughs> you know, you know, as a, I know something <laughs> about that. <laughs> you negotiate that. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, but still, we, 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 we tend to take some of those uh, opportunities in a, in a very uh, strategic way in, in bringing some of that. Um, now, there are startups in that space that come in and say, hi, uh, again, not necessarily as an engineering, um, they would come in with a basic prototype, right, and say, this is the prototype that we got, I think this is going to change the world, and I'm like, mm, you know, this won't even fit the crib in the, <laughs> in, our, in our NICU, so you might want to change the entire design, and so we, we, we help uh, educate the, uh, the, the early stage uh, companies to, to help them understand, okay, here, come into the real environment and, and take a look. So for in order to do that, what we created was uh, Honor Health uh, partnered with uh, CDW, um, again, tech company, where CDW and Honor created a care innovation lab within the health system. So this is a studio concept, but you know you could you could build a studio of a, uh, of a ICU or a uh, operating room, and you can quickly build the necessary infrastructure within that studio, uh, run a product trial there, see how that would go through, mm -hmm. and then eventually um, get the validation of the product, and then take uh, and and you could take, tear it down and build another one. So. So we, we, we were very fortunate to build that uh, within our, our, our system, and uh, we now are continuing to see validation of different products that are coming up across from our, um, we're an LP in, in, a, in, a, in a particular um, um, large fund, and that fund had about 30 or 40 companies. <laughs> and Whoa. these 30 or 40 companies would come in and say, hey, we want to be partners with uh, trying to use your care innovation lab in some fashion or the other so that we could. So we have then the opportunity to choose amongst these companies which one would be a, a, an a, a strategic fit for Honor Health and would it make sense for us to make an investment. So we, ha we have that visibility and approach. Well, and, and that leads into the idea of, are, are you seeing a particular areas of interest um, that you see more uh, innovation in right now, or, or are there particular areas that Honor likes yeah. more than others? Um, so the reason why I'm jumping for this is because <laughs> we have an amazing uh, neuroscience research uh, unit. Um, again, we are very collaborative, and innovation is a team science play. It's not one approach, right? We all think that oh, something is happening only here. No, no, it's a team science approach, and we're very co collaborative within that sandbox, and uh, we partner with Barrow Neurological on a number of these phase zero studies where some of that work happens in some of our hospitals as well. Uh, and uh, the, the point here is, because of our amazing neuroscience capabilities, we then in, in initially jumped into putting those investments into neuro devices. So that's how in our um, 18 companies that in our portfolio, um, almost four of them are neuro. Whoa. So that's a, that tells you that we're building a portfolio uh, mm -hmm. specific in neuro. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to stay only there. As, as, as things expand and evolve, we, we, we try to play in other areas too, which can make a difference. Because I keep saying this to a lot of uh, folks, uh, you know, we're, uh, um, the standards of care in pancreatic cancer happened right here in Arizona, 92nd Street in Shea, and Tishan, where, you know, if you talk about uh, the standard of care of a Brax and Gemcitabin cisplatin, that's the standard of care that happened right here. And it's not a, a fancy, uh, in place, but you're right here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So that's why your innovation local has a global impact. Oh, it very much does. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing at Mayo as far as trends? Yeah, I think the, because of that strategy that I talked about, that Cure Connect, Transform, it's been kind of broad, but I would, the industries that I would, or the areas that I would call out are kind of the areas that have been exciting that most people talk about, you know, say, Gen AI, large language models, um, you know, cell gene therapy, biomanufacturing, um, you know, advanced care at home. Those would those would be digital pathology. Um, I would say those would be 
the areas that I would call out where we've been seeing a lot of opportunities and candidly where we've been excited to say, hey, bring us ideas in those, in those areas as well. Yeah. I, would, I would echo AI, Gen AI again. That's, that's a whole lot of different uh, area that if we want to go down that path. Yeah, I um, mean, in many of the innovations I am seeing, all, AI shows up yeah. in, in all, all of them. Um, so, so that we can keep on time for this, I'm gonna end with just one more question here, which is what are some investments that have been made that either worked out wonderfully well or, or worked out um, not so well, and, and things that you have been able to learn from those? I mean, I, 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 would, I would say areas that where we from a male system have learned and are trying to learn um, where there's been you know, friction is that male is, because we're such a collaborative environment, from a business deals making perspective, it's slower. And so I'm you know, taking a step back, I'm coming from outside of the male environment. I came from a kind of corporate side, so the speed of which um, you, know, you get deals done is a lot faster um, than how it happens in mail. And I think sometimes I can, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, everything is quick, 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 quick. You, you, you're moving at the speed of light. Whereas mail, very collaborative environment, um, you want to get those touch points you know, throughout, throughout, the, throughout our system, throughout the campuses. So, so it might be an idea that we think is interesting that might be interesting from Arizona perspective, but hey, you know what, Rochester or Jacksonville, they could also use this as well and we wanna to talk to them. And so that can cause frustration sometimes with the entrepreneur because you know, they, they, they want and need are looking to move fast. And so, um, you know, broadly speaking, I would say that is something that we male recognize as a, you know, a little bit of a hurdle when dealing with, uh, with, with entrepreneurs and uh, somewhat of a weakness, but we see that as a potential strength in that, hey, look, we're slow because we're trying to be collaborative and when we do get something, you will have a volume with not just the Arizona campus, but maybe other campuses as well. Um, but that is something that, uh, I, I've definitely learned as a, as a, as a challenge or, or, or something that we need to communicate broadly and try push along our internal capabilities of moving a little bit faster. Yeah, um, more, more deliberative approach is, is a, <laughs> um, is, is, has, has become the better approach. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Karen, how about you? Uh, I think I mentioned this uh, uh, company called CND Life Science. Oh, yes. So I, again, that's, that's one of the best investments that probably we might have made in the last 40 years because, again, it came with a simple idea that skin punch biopsy can be done and uh, there is significant clinical evidence, uh, published uh, uh, papers out of it, and we said, okay, let's, let's go for it. Um, we wrote our first check and the, uh, the co-founders then decided to build the company right here in, in Arizona. And, um, uh, now I think they're they're close to ten thousand plus square feet. Uh, and, and you mentioned it's only about four years. <laughs> four years. <Right>. That's excellent. <laughs> and within four years, they achieved uh, break even, probably profitability too. So um, significant non dilutive funding, but at the same time, a very good solid company. I think they 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 have close. They created close to sixty plus jobs. I think in in the in the in the valley. So. That's a, that's a good story for us, uh, where it started right here, we, in, we invested in, it grew within the state, and is contributing to the state's economy. So, so we, that's, that's an amazing story for us as a, as a whole. Similarly, there are a few of those where we were able to implant a company from um, California, where mm. we said, okay, we can help you all the way from clinical validation. You know, bring it in, uh, it's a prototype, they just brought a pen-based EEG, a portable EEG machine, and this was like a simple 3D printed uh, instrument that they showed us and I was like, okay, we will we'll have to work with you for a few years and eventually we, we, we were successful in bringing them to a clinical stage where they were just a prototype to a clinical stage and uh, NIH funding and they're, they're doing well. They're, they're now implanted right here. Uh, they won some 
state grants as such. So what I say is our, our money, we, we, we call ourselves as, uh, we, we don't call ourselves as a venture capital in any shape or form. We're an innovation um, fund where we would like to put some gasoline on that fire and if we believe that that's the right thing and then it goes on where there is a multiplier effect with others joining in. And that's excellent. It's wonderful to hear about what these hospitals are doing and how they're investing. Please thank our panelists here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let me tell you, the next thing that's going to happen here is that these breakout sessions are happening in rooms um, 161 and 163 a key, uh, here across the hall. And so that you keep on time, you have about a minute to go get over there. <laughs> that's a, that's a, Thank that's you so much. <laughs>